coast of Papua New Guinea, preparations are underway for the world's first deep ocean mine. Rocks found on the ocean floor are exceptionally rich in copper and gold, could be worth billions of pounds. But scientists are warning that the mining, mining of the rock, will devastate marine life. And Sir David Attenborough is among those who's condemned the plans. Our science editor, David Shukman, has been given exclusive access to the project. In the brilliant tropical waters of Papua New Guinea, a controversial project is taking shape that could have a huge impact on the oceans. A vast, lumbering machine is going through final testing. It looks like a cross between something military and an invention from science fiction. It's whirling steel teeth designed to break up the rocks of the seabed. This will be part of the world's first deep sea mine. This is the first time that anything like this has ever been tried, sending these massive machines a mile down to the ocean floor, and there, well, tearing it up to send valuable metals up to the surface. And because this is all so new, no one really knows exactly what the impact is going to be. The company behind the mine portrays it as a neat and efficient way to get at rich deposits of gold and copper and it claims there'll be less disruption than there is in mines on land. The offshore alternative is in fact, from an environmental perspective, a far better way to provide the world with the minerals that it requires. Uh, offshore, there'll be no clearing of rainforests, there'll be no relocation of communities, there'll be no um, large waste dumps. But not everyone believes all that. Fishing supports thousands of jobs in Papua New Guinea, and some here worry that important tuna stocks will be at risk. The UN Development Programme wants the mining project stopped. One-sixth of the tuna in the whole world comes from this, the Pacific and from this one country. Huge numbers of people's lives depend on fisheries, and this project potentially will jeopardise all of that. So there's a difficult balance for Papua New Guinea. Millions here live below the poverty line. This is one of the poorest countries on earth. But mining projects on land have often failed to improve conditions. As a developing country, Papua New Guinea is obviously looking for new sources of income and deep sea mining may help provide that. And if it works, and it is a gamble, there are dozens of other mining projects around the world that are likely to follow. So what happens here could really usher in a whole new era of what we do to the oceans. The first project will target deep, hot springs known as hydrothermal vents. They're packed with minerals needed for electronics and renewable energy, so some scientists say we'll have to mine them. But others warn that teeming communities of rare forms of life could be wiped out. It's, it's heartbreaking. We showed David Attenborough our video of the ocean mining machines. He's horrified at the idea of the destruction of hydrothermal vents. That's where life began. Um, and that we should be destroying these things uh, is, is so deeply tragic. I mean, uh, that humanity should just plough on, just with no regard for the consequences, because they don't know what they are. Right control has been disabled. Back in Papua New Guinea, testing continues. One major concern among critics is that the government here is a shareholder in the mine. OK, sweep in. Raising doubts about its ability to step in if things go wrong. But staff here say they'll try to minimise the impact. We're not in an environment that we can just do whatever we want. People are watching, there are regulations that we need to abide by and modify to suit so that the environment is the winner in the end. One of the giant machines is tested underwater. In the next two years, it'll be lowered to the seabed and put to work. The start of a new gold rush in the deep ocean. David Shukman, BBC News, in Papua New Guinea.